All right, let's see here. Oh, this is weird. This is too low. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Um, can you see me? <laughs> I am trying a new camera today, so bear with me. Um, like I said, this has been a beautiful, beautiful learning experience for us all. I'm still very thrilled to be able to virtually teach this class. Yeah, that's better. Um, and uh, today we are going to be doing something that's um, relatively simple. I'm going to give you the simple. I'm going to look at the right camera here. I'm going to give you the simple version. Um, and then we're going to give you some tips for making it a little bit more advanced. Um, today is called Hoksang Soup, which means in Korean, student soup. I feel like I might be mispronouncing that, but I think, I, I think I'm pretty close. Um, I spent time in South Korea studying on, on an exchange program, studying arts of Korea, food, culture, and about the country where I was born. So um, this is called Hoksang Soup. So as, as young people, we know that um, um, oftentimes, and as students, college students, high school students, Sometimes we don't have a lot of ingredients um, to make delicious foods. So I'm gonna show you a really neat way to make something that's tasty and easy and affordable. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of the picture and you're gonna be listening to my voice and watching my hands a lot this time. Thank you. Okay, now we can do this. Okay. There, cutting board. We have the cutting board right here. Okay. We have the stove with my giant wok pan right there that I just really, really like. Um, the flame is on already just to give us a, a start. All right. Let's see. There we go. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to chop some garlic. I'm just going to have, I have garlic and ginger here. And this is a ramen soup. So, you know, that's fun because a lot of times um, this is the most affordable thing to eat. When I was young, this is what I ate a lot of when I moved out of my house uh, before college. I was like 17. Um, I knew, my brother and I, we knew 120 ways to cook ramen. So this is very affordable. What is it, like less than 50 cents a package now? Where you can buy a whole box for a 48 for, I don't know, $5. It's just not very expensive. So we're going to take some, um, oops, they're boiling already. So I'm going to turn that down on low. If you keep your cover on your pan when it's boiling, your water will not evaporate. Okay, it just hits the top. It rises and rolls back into the pan. Okay, so here we go with garlic. Remember last time, firm grip on that knife. We're gonna smash our garlic, boom. And it's because I have garlic here from the last class that we're adding it. If I didn't have garlic, we wouldn't be adding it. Okay, boom, boom. This is a nice setup, I like this. And I'm sure you guys might enjoy not having to see me gaze upwards into the, the sky. This is a different view. Okay, good. Almost there. You can see my hands. Oh, good. I can see your, my hands too. And I can also see the chat. And I'm hope, hopefully that will tell me if people are actually watching. Um, this this virtual club I know and I know it that's going to just gain so much um, popularity as time goes on. Just getting the word out to everybody. Useful information. Okay, good. All right, now we'll get rid of that trash. Easy peasy. Chop 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 time. Chop chop chop. See, milling, chop, chop, chop. And this is soup. So you don't necessarily have to have, it could be a rough chop. So this garlic is gonna flavor the soup, but it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? So before we add it, 
we're going to go ahead and do our ginger. Remember how I said we had a whole hand of ginger? Well, it was one finger, really, and I, I broke a piece off. And I set it to the side without putting it in the refrigerator. And there you go. It sealed itself up. It healed itself. So, but this ginger is only less, is a week old. And it's still very, very good. Very good condition. Okay. So I'm going to take that little piece, that little nub. And I'm going to chop off the exposed area again. I'm going to chop off some of the little um, eyes, just like on a potato. So I'm just going to chop it off this time instead of scraping it with a spoon. Good. Good. Save us a little time. Although we're, we don't have to be in a super big hurry here today. All right. This is a simple, simple, simple dish, but you can make it as elaborate as you want to. Again, I'm just using the garlic and the ginger root because I have it. If I did not have it, garlic powder would work fine. Ginger powder would work fine. Neither of these ingredients in the dish would work fine. This is why it's called student soup. Very easy going and forgiving recipe. Okay. So we're going to take out those pieces away from the ginger. I just realized I added the wrong area. There you go. All right. And we're going to start to work on our soup. So I'm going to take the lid off. The flame's on low. Good. I'm going to put this over here for a minute. All right. We have a simmer going on. A simmer is a, is a little bubble. See that? Just a little, little bubble. Not a rolling bubble, a little bubble. Okay. We're going to add our garlic right to the water. It's going to give it lots of flavor. And our ginger right to the water. And as soon as you add anything to a, a simmering pot or a boiling pot, it's naturally going to cool it down. So the bubbles might slow down, and that's fine. I'm going to open my ramen. Okay, this is my way of opening ramen. With the closed side toward me, I just bust it in half like this. Okay? Because I don't want really long stringy noodles. I want like half, half the size of noodles. First, before I take out the ramen, because we're not using the ramen yet, we're going to take out the seasoning pack. A lot of people say, throw that away. We're not, because this is student soup. So we can use this wisely. All right? There's a lot of sodium in these packages, but it doesn't mean you have to use the whole package, okay? This is beef. We're gonna use, open up the chicken. We're gonna mix our beef and our chicken, because in a lot of commercial foods, the beef and the chicken are mixed. It's okay. Nothing. If you only have one ramen pack that's chicken and one that's beef, you can mix it up. All right? And here we go. We're going to take our seasonings. I'm going to shake it down to the bottom. Shake it down to the bottom. And then I'm just going to open this up gently so the powder doesn't go everywhere. Just like that. And we're going to add half of each of these. Okay? So, And now if this was a rolling boil, I might add... If this was a rolling boil, what would happen when you add a dry ingredient like this to a rolling boil is it makes it fume up. It'll, it would make this fume up and then it might even go over the top of the pan. So you want to have that at a lower temperature whenever you add your dry product. Okay. Now I'm going to increase the temperature a little bit again to almost medium. Just to get our little simmer going again. Give this a stir. Oops, let me use this. We have several, several tools I'm gonna to show you that I'm using with my soup. So this is a tool called a slotted spoon. That's just the easiest thing, just to mix it. A wooden spoon works fine, a metal spoon works fine. Metal is very conductive though, so if you are going in and out of a hot, boiling pot of liquid it will get hot I also if you notice this I also have a little tray here to hold my utensils that's a smart thing to do okay especially when you're cooking a lot of 
a lot, a great quantity of things. Okay, now let's speed it up a little bit, Tara. All right, here we go. We have protein today to work with, okay? It's chicken, all right? Oops, chicken tenderloins. All chicken is expensive right now. So if you don't want to have use chicken, that's okay. You can also use ground beef. You can make meatballs like those mandu dumpling mixed meat we had before. You can use tofu or you can use no meat. Everything's fine. This is student soup. So that means you find anything that you have and you put in this soup. When we were students in Korea and in Poland, we were all pretty poor. So um, we used to, everybody used to bring one item and basically throw it in the pot. You know, somebody might have had tofu, somebody might have had the noodles. So I'm going to cut this open. So chicken is very expensive. So oftentimes I'll find the piece, the package, that looks like it has a good amount of meat in there. But, you know, is at a relatively good cost. So this package of eight tenderloins was about $7. So that a little bit over. So this is probably a dollar a piece of chicken. But it looked better than the three chicken breasts that were at the same price. So I'm going to take these, t these tenderloins and I'm just going to cut these up. I changed my cutting board. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Now you can't see, so I'm gonna move this cutting board back on top of the big one. Because you should never, ever switch your cutting board to use um, meat on a vegetable cutting board, or you know, or go from chicken or pork to vegetables or cross or fish. You don't want to cross contaminate. Because different types of food proteins, you know, have different bacteria. They have different bacteria life. They have different. They have all sorts of different stats that you that you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't mix them. If you work in a restaurant, they have special, special, safe cutting boards that are color coded. Green is for vegetables. Yellow is for fish, normally, or chicken, whatever the restaurant wants to call that cutting board. is fine. Red is for beef, red meat. Okay, good. Time check, doing good, got a half an hour. All right, because believe it or not, these little pieces of chicken cook fast. We're gonna put one more piece of chicken in here. If you cut it into small pieces, you know, it's gonna, it's, you're gonna get full faster. You're gonna eat your food slowly. You're gonna, it's gonna fill your tummy up. It's also gonna flavor the broth more because it's um you have more surface of food to broth. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this broth, this chicken, and dump it right into the water. So we're essentially boiling this chicken, okay? Which is not a super glamorous way to cook chicken, but it's a it's a good way. Okay, as long as it reaches the proper temperature. And it's cooked all the way. There are some countries that say it's okay to eat um, raw chicken, kind of like uh, we do with um, when we have hamburger, hamburger done medium or steak done medium. But I don't, I don't, I don't do that. I don't think that's a very good thing. Okay. Safe serve wouldn't like. Yeah, that. safe serve would not like that. But I did see a show about a town in, I think, with Italy where they, they ate, uh, ate it raw. Okay, so the chicken is in the pan. It's gonna be raised at temperature and we'll get that boil back because we're gonna work on a couple other things that are gonna go into that pan. So what we put in that pan so far is just water, chicken, garlic, and ginger. And the seasoning packages that came in, in that um, ramen package, that's it. Okay, now we're gonna go to the new thing to add. Now, because we're doing the broth, let's do the broth first. I still have the same ingredients that I purchased last time. You know, and so again, you buy a bottle of soy or sriracha um, or sesame. These three things are not that super expensive. 
um, when you consider that you'll be using them for maybe 10, 10, 12 meals, all right? So this probably costs, a little breakdown, this probably costs $2, this probably costs $3, and this probably costs $2. So it's, it's not that expensive when you think about how, how far you can stretch it. All right, now we're gonna put a little bit of each of these right into our soup broth. We're gonna put one circle, two circles, okay? I'll show it better on the next one. Look at the other little camera we have. All right, sesame oil. One circle, two circles. Maybe one and a half, really, on that. So that was about one and a half tablespoons. Soy sauce was probably two tablespoons. We probably have like three cups of water in there. Okay. A little stream, a little tiny bit of sriracha, nothing too crazy. Maybe that was a quarter teaspoon or something. Okay, good. Because some people are very sensitive to sriracha. You know, sriracha is made with peppers. You know, really spicy peppers that have been dried in the sun. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is, uh, where is it? Oh, because we wanna be healthy, <laughs> um, we're gonna add any kind of vegetable that we can find in the house, okay? If I would have had a student soup, we would have been looking around everybody's dormitory, looking in everybody's refrigerator to see what kind of vegetables we had. So sometimes it would be like somebody had a little green onion. Sometimes somebody had a little bit of potatoes. Um, just whatever we had, we would put into this. So I have, I didn't go out and buy produce for this. I thought I'll just do it like I did when I was a kid, a student. And I'm going to use a can of vegetables that I have in my cupboard. Okay. So I'm going to open this up with our handy dandy can opener. OXO brand. That's the best brand of can opener. In my opinion. We're going to take our strainer right here. And I'm going to strain out my vegetables. So I just have the vegetables and not the juice. You could use the juice, but I'm not going to. Okay. Here we go, vegetables right into the pan. We have to be careful that we don't hurt ourselves. Okay, so I'm gonna use a little spoon to help me do that. I know I'm not on camera with y'all, but next time I will be. Okay, good, okay, good. So let's show that. The vegetables are in that pot. It's looking lovely, very nice. We're getting closer to the time that the real action starts to happen. We've got chicken and vegetables, garlic, ginger, and seasoning. Five items in that student soup. Okay, now, okay, let's see where to put that. All oh, right, the next thing we're gonna add is, we're gonna prepare our eggs. This is fun. If you like eggs, you'll like this part. Um, I have my eggs right here. I have two eggs, large, and I'm going to put them right into this bowl. There's a way that you can, I'm gonna show you another way to use your eggs in your soup when we do a fancier soup. Today we're gonna to do a sort of a rustic soup, not too much stress. So again, if you are feel, or you are, feeding more than one person like you and your friend this is a good thing to do you take your eggs four four chopsticks just beat those up beat those up in a glass bowl or any bowl not a shallow bowl okay all right we're making an excellent time excellent time all right so we gotta wait, we have to wait until this comes to a higher boil. So we're gonna turn this up. There we go. Good. Now, before we add our egg, we're gonna add, go ahead and add our noodles. So we have two packages. And like I said, 
I broke these in half because I really don't want a lot of long noodles. I want these to last longer, especially if you're sharing this dish. You want, you know, enough so everybody can have a bite. There we go. We're going to add our noodles. And I'm going to show the camera in just a second. Just very gently drop them in. Don't splash. Don't, don't take your noodles, you know, and hold it this high and drop it. Okay? Very gently take them out. Who knew there was such an art to cooking ramen? But there actually is. There can be. Ramen noodles are called alkaline noodles. Okay. Um, I will get more into the science of that someday. But basically, these are the kind of noodles that break down a little, le a little less than like a wheat noodle. Um, they're firm. They're kind of stretchy and flexible. Um... They're good shelf storage, obviously, so you can have like these noodles sitting on a shelf for like ever. Um, alkaline implies that they have salt in them, so there's definitely that. So that's probably like more of a preservative uh, for the noodle. So this is pretty cool looking. So this is gonna stay in here, in there cooking for like three minutes. So it's 523 right now. So at 520, Five, we're going to add our egg because we want this to have a nice rolling boil or not um, a rolling boil but you know a, a harder boil all right so I'm gonna let that be and here's my tool of choice right now spaghetti spoon and we'll use that a lot when we take the noodles out so you can grab hold of those noodles if you try using a tong right here, for noodles which I have done that works but when you go to pick it up because of the tong design if you look here they have these sort of hollow handles so what happens is you get your noodle you pick it up but the juice that's around that noodle goes down those hollow handles and guess what it burns your hands and also goes all over the place because there's a big old opening right there so these aren't really good for hot noodles. I, I purposely wanted to tell you that. I'll save you some, an accident, okay? Okay, so now, now we have a higher boil, okay? Again, playing with flame is really fun. So just be careful. This is, I don't have an electric um, stove. I like flame stoves. I like gas stoves so I can see. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna move this pan so you can probably see it a little bit better. Well, it doesn't matter, here we go. All right, so what you're gonna do basically is while this is boiling, you're gonna, this is called egg drop. So if you have wedding soup or different soups where they add an egg drop part to it, this is how they do it. So in wedding soup, they pretend like, they, the symbolism is that the egg drop looks like a, a, a veil. A woman's veil that she wears when she gets married which wedding soup is also reminds me a lot of this kind of soup that we're making because it's all a conglomerate of a bunch of different ingredients okay so we just drop that in nice and slow and you can even do that slower and I'm gonna show you the veil in a minute I'm just gonna see if I can't get a little bit more out you don't want to waste food guys do as much as we can out Okay, good. All right. Good time. Good timing. Okay, so if you look in the soup, which I'm going to show you again, you can see those egg, the egg particle floating around like that. If this was a less busy soup. You would see it a little bit better. Everything's kind of the same color, you know, but you can see that there's just these beautiful strands of egg in there. And the slower you go, the better the strand is. So you can you can have fun with that. It's all about what you want and what if you're performing for your friends, you know, what you find enjoyable. Okay, there you go. So that three minutes is up, but we're still gonna leave this in here for now because here's the next fun, a couple fun things we're gonna do for this dish. Okay, you see how beautiful that is so far? Okay, so, all right, 
Let's get, let's just leave this right here for right now. All right, now, my brother and I, like I said, we were on our own at a pretty young age. We're going to turn this down now. This is pretty much done. We're going to turn this off. We're going to turn the heat off. Because any, this is still going to keep cooking, but with the residual heat that's in the pan. All right, I'm going to show you my face. Here I am. Okay, so this is a fun thing. My brother and I came up with these brilliant ways to use like chip dip and ramen together. So there are many fancy recipes out there and on YouTube that they call it all these fancy words like creamy ramen, like cheesy ramen, like this or that. But this is how it started. It's just a couple kids just throwing things together. This is French onion, B&L, my favorite. But if you add one dollop of French onion dip or any kind of onion dip to your meal, it, it makes the broth creamy and whitish. And it's just a really added touch. It's just very, very nice. Um, it's, it's cool, you'll see. So you just take your dip. And we're gonna add one spoonful. This much, say. We're gonna add two because this is a big pot of that two Ugh. and another one. Yes, nice. Okay, then we're gonna put that to the side. We don't need that anymore. All right, we're gonna get our slotted spoon. We're gonna start to dissolve that right into the soup. See how that's like breaking down? And some people say, well, it's breaking, you know, breaking. Do you know what that means? It's like when um, cream or an egg hits, hits uh, another kind of liquid and it doesn't stay resolute. It sort of breaks up into little particles. Some people don't like that. It doesn't matter to me. It still tastes wonderful. Okay, there you go. So I'm gonna stop stirring and try to get a nice visual for you. Look at that, delicious. That is a big bowl of soup with just three pieces of chicken cut up, two packages of ramen, one can of vegetables, seasoning, garlic, ginger, and a couple dollops of dip. Okay, good. Now we're gonna go to the next thing, super fun. Actually, we're getting ready to serve. We're gonna serve them and show you about um, different things to eat with, with this meal. Okay, good. So right now I'm gonna move this onto this. I'm gonna show you guys this. This is gonna be fun. I'm gonna put this pan right over here on my handy dandy cutting board. Here's another good trick. You never want to put this handle, any handle that sticks out from your pan, you don't want to put that in an awkward placement, at an awkward placement. If I need to push that away from me so that my hand doesn't accidentally bump into it or hit it or my hip or myself, any part of me, because what happens is somebody could get badly burned, you know, with, with a hot pot of soup. So you always want to watch your handle. Wouldn't you agree, Patrick? Absolutely. Uh -huh. It's nothing worse than burning your foot off when you're making food. Uh huh, soup. when you're making food. If you drop, yeah, if you splash a hot thing on your, oh, it's terrible. Okay, so here's my favorite glass bowl that I always use at home. I took from my husband who used to make popcorn in it. Um, here we go. Check this out. You're just gonna go into your bowl with your spaghetti spoon. You're just gonna grab as much as you want. This looks like a giant bowl of food, really, but this is probably a little enough for two people to eat. Maybe at a couple sittings. And I'm gonna put some stuff right in the bottom here. When you store any leftover soup like this, or anything with pasta in it, I always separate my noodles from my broth. Otherwise, it turns into mush overnight. So I got, there's a little bit of everything in my thing here. And then I'm gonna put that aside. Before I add my broth, good, I'm gonna put this aside. I'm gonna go ahead and add other ingredients to this dish, okay? We're gonna add my favorite thing in the whole wide world, kimchi. 
Again, if you don't have kimchi, that's okay. Maybe your favorite thing in the whole wide world to add to soup might be beets or um, scallions or raw garlic or crackers. It doesn't matter. Seaweed. So I'm gonna take a little fork and add, just take some out and put it in the corner. Now when we do a little bit of fancier soup later, which I'm gonna have a noodle day, I'm gonna show you how how we really add some extra ingredients to this. And again, this is a simple, this, the whole point of this is student soup. So I'm gonna put a little kimchi in there. Really nice. And then I'm gonna also add something I forgot to get out. It's right here, a piece of seaweed. So in Korea, so we add, if you have a ramen soup or a fan, or in Japan, if you have a fancy um, Japanese noodle soup, you can add a piece of seaweed. Um, this is a toasted seaweed. You can either add it on top as a decoration, and then it'll get readily absorbed into the liquid very fast. So, or you can eat it on the side. So this is Korean snacking seaweed that has been toasted over a flame with a little bit of um, oil added and some salt. Shiny. Yeah, it's shiny. It's beautiful. It's tasty. I eat it with rice. There's so many ways. Oh, we'll have our seaweed lesson. What does it okay. taste like? The ocean. <laughs> it does. It tastes a little salty like the ocean. It's very crispy. It's really, really, really delicious. I'm sorry. I keep looking at my computer screen instead of the camera. Okay, so here we go. We're going to add just a little... Bit of that in there just for looks. And let me. See, it's beautiful so far. Now it's time to add our liquid and then it's time to show you how to eat it. Okay. Can you see? Yep. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna add our liquid. So I get a ladle, which I forgot to get out earlier, right here. Ladle. Handy dandy ladle. We're gonna go back into our pot. We're gonna take some of this juice out. You know what, I don't even think I got that much chicken in there. There we go. Got some now. How do you know the chicken's done? Ah, uh, I could temp it, which I could, let me get my handy dandy thermometer out. If there's any doubt in how, if the chicken is done, you can also probe, you can probe anything with your food thermometer. This is a basic one that I got at a grocery store, but there's like fancy ones, electric ones, um, ones that just read. There's something you can just point at the food. And then yes, it. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be 160, right? Mm -hmm. This is done. It's hard to do it with this because it's in soup. Small pieces of chicken. And they're small pieces of chicken. But I can also take this and... You know, I can just take this with my fingers because this is cooled down enough and I can open it and I can use the powers of observation and I can see that that is totally done through and through. There's no pink. It's completely white. It's completely opaque. That is done. So when it turns from pink to white. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. So one of the main things that I learned in college, I, was, I went to school first for, to be an, an artist, a ceramic artist were the powers of observation. Before we had computers, guys, or gauges, or this and that, you know what we used? Our eyes, and our brain, and our noses, and our touch. And that's how we kind of figured out things as we went. Okay, so here we go. I'd like you to see me, and then I'll show you the bowl. All right. Oh, here's our beautiful bowl with the, with the broth in it. You, you want to see that. It's beautiful. There you go. Beautiful bowl with the broth in it. I usually take my broth, leave some food exposed noodles. And then if I need to add more broth, I can. Okay. All right. Now, these are the things that I like to eat with when it comes to Korean folks. And I know I'm, I was raised as an American. But I just, I love to think of myself as a Korean person too. 
chopsticks. These are our famous lightsaber chopsticks. <sighs> they come in two different colors. These are made out of plastic. Come in many different colors. They, these ones change color. So they're really, really cool. Show so, me red. Um, pink. Red. Nice. See? The thing that's fun about these is you just, so here's how you hold a chopstick, okay? The one chopstick right here begins to your ring finger and between your thumb and index finger. This chopstick never moves, okay? Never moves. You want to go to the end of your chopstick, closer to the end to hold it too, because the closer your hand is on the chopstick, um, the more difficult it is to actually use them because your hands get in the way when it gets to the food, closer to the food. So, doesn't move. Peace symbol, doesn't move on your ring finger. Okay, here's the next one. The next one is held by your top three fingers. Your middle finger, your index finger. Here's what's fun about this, guys. If you look at it, I saw this, this uh, instruction sheet before. You have one finger below, one finger in the middle, and one finger on top. Top, middle, below. That's a good way to think about it. You see that? Top, middle, below. But the top three fingers, including your thumb, is the only thing that makes those chopstick, that chopstick move. All right, now before I take a bite, I'll show you the other chopsticks. And in Korea, we use spoons when we eat our noodles to help us. This is a, a Korean type spoon. This is a ladle type spoon. I'm not sure its origin. This is, I think, a um, Japanese or Chinese, Chinese type spoon. You can put hors d'oeuvres in these. These are really great for dumpling eating. So are these. Um, so here we go, I'm gonna show you. Or, if you can't muster chopsticks, that's all right. It's perfectly acceptable, because we, you know, to use a fork and a knife, a spoon. All right, but do not use your fingers. All right, here we go. Other kinds of chopsticks, wooden chopsticks. Good. So when you go to a restaurant, they're usually stuck together like this in a wrapper. Here's what you do. You see Asian people do this all the time. Break it apart. Rub these together. You know why? Because sometimes there's wooden splinters on these. Or little wooden pieces. Because they go through a factory. You should see the videos on how chopsticks are made. So sometimes there's little wooden splinters. So they rub them together to get rid of the splinters. Again, bottom, middle, top. Then, there's a tria. We use longer ones than these, but um, metal, stainless steel chopsticks. These have ridges on the end for traction on food. Korean ones are really skinny and flat and have a better grippers on the end, but I can't get these, those um, in the United States. And lastly, the most inconvenient pair of chopsticks is the ceramic chopstick. I tried to make some, and you can buy Gifts are made with the Japanese ceramic chopsticks. These are okay, but they're just too delicate. Like, I'm afraid I would break them in my mouth, even, like, or drop them on the table. These are more for decoration, I think, or symbolism. So, those are my sets of chopsticks. Spoon, here's, now we're gonna eat. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna choose to use, I'm gonna use my uh, metal chopsticks, okay? So I like to mix everything together, just like so. Can you see me okay, guys? All right, so I'm gonna pull up some noodles, but maybe I need some help, so I might just take some of my noodles, because sometimes those noodles are long. So sometimes I might put my noodles on my spoon to help me out a little bit, to get that noodle to stop. Or sometimes I use my spoon just as a safeguard. Ready, and then down we go, down the hatch, right? See how I suck that up? That is a, um, you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to slurp up your noodles and it's okay if you make noises. 
It makes it taste better. Yes, it makes it taste better, but it's, it makes it more fun. But it's also a compliment to the chef. Whenever you slurp your noodles, here's your chicken. Mm-hmm. Well, let's just do one more. Oh, Patrick, would you like to slurp some noodles? I'm uh, good. You good? Yeah. Okay. You're I'm doing a great job. I'm going to slurp these noodles up, right? Like this. Ready? Mmm. Delicious. All right. So we are at 542. So I'm just going to summarize a little bit for you guys. This is our dish that we made. It's a beautiful, beautiful dish. It's called student soup. In Korea, we did the same exact thing, only we made it with a great big giant stock pot that was probably two feet tall that one of my friends in the sculpture studio just happened to have. And we just ran all over to our normal, um, we call them little tiny convenience stores here. In Korea, they're like, little mini grocery stores they're really better than ours because they have like fresh produce and fresh protein there so everybody ran to their closest um little shop and got something and we all came back to the sculpture studio we had a little burner oven and we just threw it all in and we called it student soup it's called hak sang soup hak sang means school or student um so that is just a very neat way combined with my history with my brother and how we used to try to eat ramen all the time um, and add things funny things like chip dip and things to just make it have a, a richer body that's something that you can totally do and just to say too that doesn't matter if you don't have all these ingredients I showed you today this soup would be delicious with like half of these ingredients um, it's all about you know having fun when you cook, cooking for a reason, and sharing your food. And just, you know, it's just, it's just a beautiful thing. Kimchi here is good for you. That's a fermented cabbage, very good for your stomach. And that's about all I have for you today. I cannot tell if anybody is watching because there is no chat right now. So I think I'm going, since I started, I think a minute early, I'm not sure, I'm going to go ahead and end. So next Friday, we're going to have another Asian dish, but I think it might be a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. I think I'm going to combine, um, I'm going to try to do a, is it East, where, is any a East Asian? South Asian. South Asian. There's going to be a South Asian dish. I'd like to do some Indian food with you all. So... Um, so that's part of the Asian continent, so it'll be really, really neat for you to see that. Okay, have a lovely weekend, everybody. Thank you.